All right, Jeff, that's you. All right. All right, so uh, unfortunately, we had two high potential incidences on one of our installations down here in Malaysia. Uh, one was, and it's all kind of related to the NOV uh, fingerboard and, and kind of malfunctioning the fingers. So the first one was is that one of our fingers was identified that it was malfunctioning. So we sent a mechanic up there to change out the actually change it out. Now if you see in the, in the picture you can see how he the mechanic hooked up his spanners. So he needed two different size spanners to to uh, replace the finger latch. So instead of using two separate lanyards he used one lanyards with one carabiner and connected both the safety clips into the actual spanner. And the second one was a broken finger latch. So if you go to the next slide. You open. All right, now here's a video. It's about three or four minutes, so you might want to fast forward it. But this is actually the CCTV video of the mechanic out there operating, changing the finger. And I think, you know, at Cedra, one of the things that we've been trying to utilize is more CCT footage because when you're doing the investigations and when you're presenting these different events, it really brings out exactly what happens and some of the challenges that they have out there. So the finger was still working, but we knew that there was some kind of malfunctioning. So at the current time, they were drilling ahead, they were running casing on the oxide, and there was about a 30 minute window in between the stands. So we try to utilize the time the tool pusher sent out the, uh, sent out the mechanics, said, look, you got about 30 minutes, why don't we take this time, go out there and change while you're drilling ahead, clear the red zone, and we move forward. So the mechanic went up there with his no drop tool bags, he had all his kits, and when the tool bag will come in the conversation here in a little bit. So when the mechanic's out there, he, he's got his tool bag, he got all his tools in his no tool bags, and now here the video's running. So he's changing out, out the, the finger. Now, during the video, what you'll see is you'll, you'll start zooming in, and you won't be able to see it, but that's when one of the spanners actually fell down to the rig floor. And then the video will continue on, and then you'll see it zoom in again, and the other spanner actually goes down, but this one's actually attached properly to the lanyard, so it actually doesn't fall to the drill floor. So you can see he's taking the bolts, he's using his coveralls, he's taking off his gloves. Now, this is not bad practice, it's just how the mechanic was doing it. Now, on this particular installation, we've had a lot of issue with the fingers. So these guys are almost professionals when it comes to changing out the fingers because it's such a routine task, unfortunately. So here he zooms in, he's trying to put the spanner back on his pocket and right then and there, you can't really see in the video, one of the spanners dropped to the drill floor. Now he's going through the process. He's tying off the finger with the manila rope. So when he pulls it out, it prevents it from dropping. Uh, you can fast forward a little bit, Yokam, if you want to. Down at the bottom, there you go. All right, so now what he's doing, you can see down at the bottom, you can see how the spanner's actually hanging down. Now he tried to put it back into his coveralls and the spanner fell and now it's actually hanging down. So when you see him going across, you can see that the particular spanner, it's attached but it's being dragged, dragged across when he goes back off to the floor. So in the event, one of the things that we that we pulled up in the investigation, we assumed that he had to tie it off and that the, the, the safety clip broke, but when we sent it to the no drop tools, it's more likely that when he tried to attach both of the uh, spanners into one carabiner, he did one of them, but he didn't actually get the second one and didn't realize it when he goes out to it. So uh, lessons learned, definitely, you know, it was nighttime, the guy was going out there, he had a 30 minute window, but again, he should be able to make sure his tools are secured off and check them prior to going off. The, the mechanic is a very experienced mechanic, he's done this multiple times, and again, sometimes when it gets a routine task. Now, it was brought up in the investigation about the tool bag, and well, the tool bag was way too big and way too heavy, so it wasn't realistic for him to drag a big old heavy no drop tool bag out to, to the fingerboard to make the changes. But when you reach out to the no drop tools, they do have some pretty clever bags that they can put on their waist, they can put on their shoulders. If you see the one at the second one, it has different separate clips. So you can actually put lanyards in for each of the spanners, take the one size out and then put the one size back in and it has pouches for, for his bolts. So one of the big things is if we do find a proper patch that actually really works for the mechanics, and of course you need to talk to the mechanics and say, does this practical? Do you think this could work for you? But if, if you could find a nice, so, simple solution that this guy can, you know, this is a waist shoulder bag where he can actually put it on. And if you look at the video, most likely this tool bag could have helped him be a little bit better when it comes to it. Uh, so I guess you guys, I mean, do you guys, the mechanics, when they're up at working at heights, do they use these particular tool bags or they're more on the equipment where they just, just tie it off and put it into their coveralls? I guess I'll leave that one 
to you guys to figure out, but I do think that, you know, the, the easier we can make it for the guys to get the job right and to avoid these human factors and to do pre-checks definitely can help a lot. All right, let's go with the next slide, Yokoim, if there's no questions on this. So this one is a really, uh, it's, it's a challenge, I think, not just only for Cedral, but for, for all the rigs that have these fingerboards that are, are quite, quite, they can be uh, challenging at times. So if we can go ahead and show you the video really quick. So here's a video from the CCT video of the ADs. Now, if you look at the, the three fingers in the middle, you can see he's activating it, but it, you can see the middle finger actually doesn't go all the way up. And, <laughs> unfortunately, this is a pretty common event. So they push the button to activate the, uh, the, uh, the fingers, most of the fingers come up, but one comes up partially, so it doesn't automatically actuate the way it's supposed to. And if you can see, a, the view of the camera makes it quite difficult. So in this particular event, and basically what they were doing is they were, they were, they were racking on the stand, and they noticed that the lower, they, op, op, they activated both of them, right? So the upper fingers went up and the lower fingers went partially up. So they noticed there was an issue with the lower fingerboard. So when they, they try to go ahead and put the stand in there, and unfortunately, one of the common practices for the drillers is when they have the stand in there with a the hydro racker, they kind of they kind of tap it. They say tap it, or they kind of use the up function to try to trigger that that finger that's partially open to go ahead and open it up. Now, anybody that's an engineer or with any technical experience, you have a hydro racker that has a huge amount of force, and you're tapping on this little finger. Now, even if it works the first time, if you keep doing it over and over again, it's going to wear and tear, and it's going to cause friction. So as a company, we really didn't realize that this was a practice that was going on through our company. And so it's something that I would kind of highlight to yourselves in other companies or in other drilling contractors to say, look, you know, if they're using the hydro racker with a stand in there to try to leverage the finger, that this is definitely not a very good practice. And it's human nature. I mean, the guys, they want to do a good job. You know, we, we talk about efficiency. We talk about the operations. And in their point of view, they thought that, you know, they're, they're trying to improve the operations. They didn't see the harm in it. But again, when people have the best intentions, it's usually not the best practice. So what happened here is he was trying to, trying to move, use the hydro actor to move that finger up. And by doing that, he actually bowed up the stand. So the top was in slot two and the bottom was in slot three. And he said, okay, I'll stop. So he does the right thing and he does all stop. And he sends up some spotters up to, to the lower finger board because that's the one that's having problems. So they activate the fingers and all the lower fingers actually work this particular time. So the, the spotter gives the, the AD the sign says, yep, all the fingers are, are open. What we didn't know is that up on the upper finger board that one of the fingers behind the drill stand were actually closed. The rest of them were open and one was closed. And when he tried to, to adjust the stand from the misalignment thing, the, actually the finger popped off and fell down to the upper deck. So we did their investigation and we started looking at other events that happened in the company and in the industry. And we found out that this is quite a common theme that these fingers can be very challenging and sticky. And, and I think every company kind of deals with it a different way. Another thing, if you look at this particular picture, you can see that the secondary sling did not hold. So the break did go through, but it was so much force that the, actually the secondary sling snapped. So after the investigation, we start looking at, at ways that we can improve it. You know, you look at your hierarchy controls, you look at engineering designs, you look at the administrative, and there are some things that are ongoing currently as we speak. So if you go to slide number seven, this is probably the most high-tech one that we have. Uh, it's called the, the latch hall wireless, where you actually put a particular sensor into the finger. So when the AD activates the finger open, on the NOV, NOV, NOV system, actually this sensor will tell you if it's fully opened or if it's not all the way open. And this is probably the ideal mechanism or engineering design that we could actually implement. Now, in the Gulf of Mexico at Cedro, this is being piloted on one, just one of our strings to see if it's actually gonna be working. And we haven't got the results back from the pilot. But that's probably the most robust one that actually when you activate the NOV system, this is gonna confirm that it's all the way open. Another one that we have is a video camera. Now, if you click on the next slide, here's the Rollis finger latch monitor. And I have a video and kind of shows you, show you what it's looking for. But basically it's a video cameras on the hydro racker itself. Now, if you look on the left, here's the current view that we have for the hydro racker. It's very, it's very obscured. You can't really see all the fingers because the drill pipes are involved. Now, if you play the video, you can actually see what you do. If you have the cameras on the hydro racker, you can see that your view 
is tremendously better exactly to see what's going on. Ideally, this is probably gonna be the quickest fix if procedural. If we can actually put these video camera on the hydroracker, you can put them on there and the ADs can see. Now in the investigation, they all said the same thing. Like we can't see the fingers, we can't see it 100%. We can send the spotters up there. But again, you only have so many people in the manpower. Are you gonna have two dedicated people in the upper finger burn and the lower finger burn at all time? It's not really practical, but it's pretty much the only thing we can do for right now. But uh, I've sent this to the technical team to see, you know, they're doing the investigation and see how quickly we can get installed. But you can see that this is definitely a, a good, quick solution that we could probably implement in, in a timely manner. All right, the next one is, is the robust secondary sling. And so we actually went out to NOV to try to see why did your secondary sling secure? You know, we are having these issues. We are breaking on the fingers. And if the finger does break, let's have something that can keep it from falling to the drill floor to hurting people. So this is kind of the new one that they have where it's kind of a, like a self-retractable lifeline. So when the finger breaks, it'll actually be under tension and then it'll, then it'll stop. So you don't have that, that force impact that resulted in this secondary sling breaking, but it'll kind of slide and kind of slowly descend. Now, we've talked to our technical team. They've reached out to NOV. This is what they provided. So just waiting for some more information. But it does seem like a, a decent solution. If, you know, if all fails and the finger does break, at least this will keep us from falling to the drill floor and actually resulting in an injury. All right, so I guess I want to kind of open up to, the, open up to the group. One of the things that we figured is the maintenance of the fingerboards. Now, you know, OEM has a recommendation every five years. You know, you do a complete overhaul. But at the end of the day, a, you know, at Cedro, what we did after this is we got an Excel sheet and we actually started tracking the fingers and how many times we use it because, and it was a valid point because one they were saying is that, you know, if you have a, a 10 finger latch on one slot, that end slot is the one that's going to be open almost 10 times more than the, the slot in the back. So you can see, is there a rotation method? Is there a certain way of doing it? And I, I guess I was going to kind of ask the group, you know, is there something that you guys do with the, the maintenance on the finger that's outside of the norm, something that we can, that we can capture or something that we can suggest to make it things, to keep it from working properly? All right, anyone uh, would like to respond to this, uh, either in the chat uh, below or, or if you want to speak, uh, please raise your hand and then we can allow you to, to talk. I guess another question that probably probably be easier for the guy, for the group to answer is uh, on those on those engineering installs when it comes to that latch hawk monitoring or the Lola's video camera or the new secondary retention from the NOV has anybody actually installed or used that or can say if it's a good solution or a bad solution? Well, I guess anybody that does do it, I mean, I would definitely like to get some feedback. If anybody has this roll-off system and they think it's a great system and that we recommend this, that we should make this like a best practice in the industry or if anything about the secondary securing, I just like to get some, some feedback on these recommendations that we identified and see if there's something that have, is anybody out there in the, in the industry already started using. Sounds good, Jeff. I think um, maybe also give give uh, the the participants some time, and then also after the uh, webinar to to reach out. Um, sorry, I think uh, Phil Philip has a question. Do you want to post it with audio? I think your audio is uh, is on as well. Yeah, Jeff. The uh, how are you? It's Phil. Hey, good. Hey, Phil. Hey, uh, I uh, the question question I've got is. Has NOV put into production the secondary retention device that you're talking about that has the retractable mechanism? Because initially the secondary retention on the fingers is to if, for the weight of the fingers. But once you have a, a finger that's not functioning correctly and then you've got the strength of the hydroracker pulling against it, then obviously that secondary retention is going to break because it's not designed for the force of the hydroracker pulling against it. So is this, is this NOV retractable system in use anywhere or is this is their uh, design for the future? Uh, that's a good question, Phil. I'm not 100% sure. I just got it from the technical departments, and that's kind of why I was asking if anybody has actually used it before, to be honest with you. Uh, I'll get back with you on that. Let me let me find out from the technical team if it's in if it's in use yet. Huh? No worries. And yeah, happy to have a conversation with you on that because I think that that third option that you, you put up is 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 a better solution for secondary retention. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. We can definitely have a conversation offline, that's for sure. All right, so I see a comment from uh, Duncan. 
uh, with um, uh, Diamond Offshore. Uh, we've had many challenges on the Ocean Mo Monarch with our finger board and we keep a spreadsheet to track which latches have been maintained and they are wor worked through, through on a systematic basis during the EOW maintenance cycle cycles. Thanks, Duncan. So I think it's, uh, it's an interesting subject. It comes up quite often, uh, maybe to consider whether we want to have a dedicated ses session talking about this, this particular subject and maybe do some preparation, get some uh, other people who have experience with this, invite them um, in, a, in, a, in a future webinar. Would that be of interest uh, to you, uh, Jeff, and others? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it would really be nice to have an NOV that would like to join so that we can... Uh, see what their input is when it comes to maintenance and see what about the systems and everything else. Okay. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's reach out to them. All right. Then um, next um, uh, we'll invite uh, Benito.